Hey everyone, welcome back to the Sunny Side. I'm Sunny, and this video right here, right now, is specifically <laughs> specifically about Mars in Aquarius. Hey guys, welcome back to the Sunny Side. For those who don't know, I'm a professional astrologer, and I do write the horoscopes for some of the newspapers up here in Canada. And if you want a personal reading, just check it out in the description box below. In addition to that, there are tons of live streams on the channel every morning here. I read, um, I read your horoscopes, and we do astrology every morning on the channel. And uh, if you'd like to tune into that, by all means, please subscribe to the channel. Maybe give the video a bloop, a thumbs up. And uh, if you drop by, and once again, it's every morning on uh, the channel here on the sunny side. If you drop by, please say what's up. Please say hello. Because remember, it's always a beautiful day to be beautiful. And it's to get, even if you're a scraggly Scorpio, <laughs> it's a beautiful day to be beautiful. But it's together that makes it a beautiful day. In addition to that, every night here on the channel, we have tarot readings. So in the morning, I do your horoscopes. And at night, uh, and we talk astrology. We talk this stuff every morning. And at night, uh, I read your tarot cards. And we do other fun stuff, night spells and what have you. If you're into that, by all means, tune in at nighttime. All right, here we go. So here's the, the structure of this video. Now, it's a video. So if you want to fast forward, by all means, fast forward. Because there's going to be a little blah, blah, blah. Then I'm going to give you my two cents about Mars and Aquarius. Then I'm going to relate to you guys uh, some of the things that other more prominent or noteworthy astrologers have, uh, modern astrologers, modern Western astrologers, have written about Mars and Aquarius uh, in the last little while. And um, I'll give you my two cents. Sometimes there's some contradictions. Sometimes when you write horoscopes every single day or you're writing a lot of astrology, uh, you know, interpretations or you know, books or what have you. It's easy to mix the sign with the house with certain ruling planets. And although there are similarities, they're not all the same. And in addition to that, you know, sometimes when you're writing it all the time, uh, we um, we get into the stereotype of things and we only talk about half the sign, so to speak. And a lot of it gets lost. And as far as Aquarius is concerned, there's a lot that might get lost. And uh, <laughs> there we go, because whether you realize it or not, Aquarius is the wild child! Whoop, whoop! Okay, whatever, Sonny. Nobody cares. <laughs> like, some people care. I'm sure Aquarius does. All right, so this video is for everybody who has a big chunk of Aquarius energy in them. And uh, like I said, here, so here's a little, like I said, you can fast forward if you, you want to jump to certain parts of it. So, and uh, in this series, the Mars series, I added a, a chunk from a neat... Uh, astrology writer towards the end and they say some interesting stuff and I give some examples of people with Mars and Aquarius if you want to check that out that's at the end all right but first let's get to the blah 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 we've got to pay some bills here first up this is the sunnyside.net this is our website here this is where you go if you want to get your astrology reports so we have a birth chart report you can get your natal report uh, which is your birth report, obviously. You can get compatibility report if you want to know if someone like is really in love with you or if they're just screwing around with you or they just want you for sex or they want your money or they want your popularity or they want to like date your sister or something <laughs> that it's in the compatibility report. There are relocation reports. Hey, Sonny, I want to know if I'm going to find love in a different city. Well, I will tell you. And then we have, or if you're going to take a job in another city, you might want to do that. Or you want to go to school in another city. That's your relocation report. And then there's your progress report as you mature through life your chart progresses you're you know you're a different person at you know 35 than you are at say 10 that's and that's your progress report and those are the different types of reports that we currently have uh, available on the sunny side.net in addition to that there's a little bit more about me here and uh along the way some of the stuff that i've created it's on the channel as well for example i wrote the book emotional weight loss if you're interested in that kind of thing by all means Check it out. Again, some of my TV interviews are here and some of my newspaper and all, blah, blah, whatever, Sonny. Okay, next. If you want to support the channel, there are a number of ways you can support the channel. First, please give the video a bloop. Bloop, Sonny, you suck. You Sonny, you're awesome. Sonny, you suck. Whatever. Fast forward, man. So, this channel is sponsored by the AstroSide.com. And there's a link in the description box below. And the AstroSide is run by um, SLC, my sexy little crab, the most beautiful woman in the whole world. And she, uh, you know, she sponsors the channel. And she creates all of this stuff. She creates the mugs. Oh, and she's my wife. She's my really cool wife. <laughs> Just letting you guys know. If you know anything about the channel, you know all about who she is. And so, anyway, she's designed all of this stuff 
Where's the Aquarius one? The Aquarian one. So she, she designed these super cool hoodies and t-shirts and mugs and she designed that on the background. And the cool hoodies come in different colors. I think black is just the boss, man. But if you're an Aquarian, well, let's do red because we're doing the Mars video. Aquarius might totally dig the red. It's a little rebellious. They're a little outside of the box. Aquarius is outside of the box. It also comes in purple. Do, 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 do. It comes in a bunch of different colors. Anyways, then we also have mugs and hoodies and blah, 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 blah. And that's at theastrostride.com. In addition to all of that, there are discount coupons available on our Facebook group. And to all that information is in the description box below. So if you go there, then you'll get coupon codes for all of the stuff on the astro side and it's really cool once again it's the astro side.com and that's where you go if you want to um get any of these cool ones do 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 that in the background is this do 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 oh leggings are really cool you can't see my leggings right now sorry you can't see my socks right now <laughs> so <laughs> and beach towels this is the wall tapestry that i have behind me and different cups and mugs oh and she made a whole bunch of novelty shirts as well check it out do, 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 do. This is our Pisces novelty shirt. I'm <laughs> really psychic. And uh, whether you realize it or not, I'll let you know right now. They all come in a bunch of, once again, they come in a bunch of different colors and sizes. Watch this. Do, 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 do. Say you want it in. Let's go with the t shirt. Do, do, do. Mm -mm -mm. Say you want the t shirt in green. I like the t shirt screen. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Anyways, that's the action. There we go. That's the blah, blah, blah. Let's get down to the video. All right. Mars and. So that's where you go. The astroside.com. And it's right here on the channel if you want to check that out. I'm going to a little blah, blah. I'm a little tired today. All right. Enough blah, blah, Sonny. What's going on here? Let's set up the chart and let's put Aquarius where we're used to seeing it. We're used to seeing Aquarius up here. And so we'll just cruise this along. Click, 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 click. Now, the first thing you want to know when you're looking at this thing, and this is my two cents, and I'm going to spend the next 10, 15 minutes talking about my two cents on Mars and Aquarius. And then we'll get a... And then we'll read what the other guys say. First, there's some... there. This, what you're looking at here, is in three separate components. Predominantly three popular ones. I mean, this is how they relate down here. But we have the house the house which is the number you know okay the house <laughs> the house is which is the number and then we have the planet which is the energy and then we have the sign which is how the energy is colored and they go together to give a certain kind of vibe or a certain kind of event that's going to happen in your life or a certain kind of series of things that might happen to you and you or you might do unto other people depending on what we're looking at now so, for example, the first house is all about you, how you look. You know, all right, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Let's get down to it. Anyways, once again, there are similarities, but it's not the same. Usually Aries rules, I'm sorry, Aquarius rules the 11th house, but the, um, anyway, so they're, so, anyways, let's get on to it. <laughs> okay, so we have a whole, I have a whole bunch of videos about this stuff. So first thing you want to know is Mars. What's the deal with Mars? Mars, you can juxtapose Mars and Venus. Uh, Venus is what you attract and how you rapport how you're in rapport with others how you relate to others in a harmonious and loving way so when you're in a good mood you kind of Venus the other person Mars is what you do when you get your jazz going it's your business up in your business you know let's get some Mars going on here and Mars gets a bad rap all of the time some people call it a Maleficent, Maleficent, or how you pronounce it, uh, kind of planet. They think of it as a bad planet, uh, but it's not, necess not necessarily a bad planet. Some planets are good in certain situations. Some planets are not good in certain situations. And so, okay, then, and that's just basically it. Mars, in some parts of the chart, is good. In some parts of the chart, it can cause problems. Generally, as a general guideline, Mars heats things up. Let's say. It puts a lot of energy, it puts a lot of jazz, it puts a lot of action into wherever it flows in their chart. And there's So Mars in the second house 
means your money in, money out. It's going to heat up your money house. If Mars is in the eighth house, it means you're going to attract a partner who's going to spend a lot of money. It also means legal battles. Mars in the seventh house means you're going to put a lot of energy into your relationships. You might fight a lot in your relationships. You might have an abusive relationship. Mars in the fifth house means you might have problems with children. Mars in the sixth house means you're busy. And Mars in the eleventh house, which is what we're going to sort of talk about a bit today because Aquarius rules the 11th house is all about your friends it's about your hopes and ambitions and your desires and some of your outwardly goals and uh, it's also all of the good or the bad the karma from the house preceding it so this is your place in the outer world and if you do a good job in the 10th house say this is your career if you do a good job on a good if you do well on the job you might get a promotion and that would be here if you do a good job and you're very popular, you'll win a lot of friends. You're right here. But if you're an asshole in the 10th house, you're going to have problems with your friends. <laughs> and that's the way it works. It's not really that big of a deal. But that's the gist of how it works. So once again, Mars heats things up wherever it is. It puts a lot of energy into it. Positive energy, negative energies, it depends how you calibrate it. Is it always good? No. Is it always bad? No. <laughs> is it more bad than good? It depends. <laughs> it depends on what's going on. In addition to all of that, Mars doesn't Mars in Aquarius does not necessarily have to be in your eleventh house. So Aquarius eleventh house is all about once again. It's your hopes, your dreams, your aspirations, the rewards you receive from your career, public recognition. Like not like publicity. That's your pub tenth house, but public. But being recognized uh, uh, from the 10th house, standing out from your peers. The 11th house also represents your peer group, your social peer group, the people, you know, some of the people you work with, your social network, but being recognized and standing out in it. You know, like a promotion at work, right? <laughs> or like winning an award. But if Mars in an Aquarius has, now I haven't talked about Aquarius yet, but now Mars in Aquarius doesn't have to be in the 11th house. Mars in Aquarius could just as easily be way down here in your first house. Right? And it's very different. This would have nothing really to do with your friends or social network. Or Mars in your second house is all about your money. So this doesn't really have to do with your social network because it's your money. <laughs> this is like, duh. <laughs> Mars in the fourth house is your family. <laughs> you know, It's your mother and father and, and your children and your home, your physical health. House, so I don't see how that is. I think groups of people, unless you're gonna have like a wild party, <laughs> like if you, unless you're gonna have all of Facebook and YouTube or on Twitter come over to your to your house for a party. I don't see how that. How that Anyways, so like I said, but we're gonna read a lot of things that talk about large groups of people and about your friends and stuff. And so just keep that in mind. It's not necessarily the video is not about Mars in the eleventh house. It's Mars in Aquarius. But once again, sometimes when talking, because Aquarius rules the 11th house, there are similarities, but it's not the same. And that means Mars in the 6th house in Aquarius, that's your health and your habits and your small pets. And it's about being busy every day. And so that's not necessarily about being with friends. Now, having said all of this, so just keep in mind there are some similarities, but it's not the same. Now, so that's the action. In addition, now let's wipe the slate clean and forget about the house stuff. And let's talk more about Mars and Aquarius here. So Mars, it's your action. You know, it's what you're, it's what you're doing. It's where you put your gas. It's where you have a little bit of fight. It's where if you're pushed, you're going to push back. It's kind of what you're putting your energy into. Not in a passive aggressive, not in a hopes and dreams kind of way. Not in like, yeah, I'd really like to do that if everything. Not a behind the scenes, oh yeah, I'm kind of doing that, but nobody knows I'm doing it. And it's not an attraction kind of thing. It's what you're into. It's how you do, it's how you do your action. And so that's what Mars is. It's also your sexuality. It's your like, Venus is how you love. It's like, Hey baby, what's the sava? Oh, not much. Are those is that are those chocolates for me? Well, of course they are, sweetheart. What about those flowers? Yeah. What you you know? What about that hug? Is that for me? Well, it's for everybody, baby. It's but no, it's not for everybody. No. It's, oh, Sunny. No. <laughs> no, it's not. It's for you. Venus is how you how you love. Uh, it's your 
Mars is more um, your sexual, your raw, physical, sexual energy. And keep that in mind. Some people might say Lilith is your raw, sexual kind of energy, but not really. Lilith is more about your eternal damnation. Uh, it has it alludes to your sexuality because Lilith uh, it alludes to sexual equality because Lilith um, typically one of the ways of looking at Lilith was a, a creature who wanted sexual equality but at the end she was actually kicked out of the Garden of Eden for sticking up for what she believed in and returning to the Garden of Eden is one of the whole points in the story <laughs> and so uh, she was forbidden from returning. She's eternally damned, and that's one of the, the, the that's one of, uh, you know, that's a consequence as a result of Lilith being the Lilith, Lilith kind of character, you know, the Lilith characteristics. But Mars is your general. Uh, <laughs> let's put, you know, let's wrap it up and get going, and so that's the action. Now let's talk about. So it's what you do. It's your jazz, it's your motive, you know, it's your push. It's like your steam. It's where you're going to heat your action up. It's where stuff is going on. And, and so where, whatever house it's in, that's what it's happening to. Once again, 10th house, your public career. You're going to fight with people publicly. 9th house, someone from a dis distance is going to argue with you. Or you're going to get in a fight at school. Or you're going to fight with somebody at church. Or you're going <laughs> to, you're going to, you know. Mars in the seventh house, you might get divorced. Mars in the sixth house, you're going to be so busy, it's not even funny. You know, Mars in the fifth house, one of your kids are going to get sick. You know, it's just, you know, it's different here. Mars in the first house, you're going to have headaches. You're going to be argumentative and have headaches. Mars in the twelfth house, behind the scenes, enemies are going to attack. Mars in the eleventh house, you're fighting on Facebook. You know, you're Facebook fighting, you're Twitter fighting. You're, you know, you're fighting with your social network. You're fighting with, you're fighting with your social network. But Aquarius, now let's forget about the fighting part and let's look at the positive side of this. There's a negative and a positive to all of this. Now Mars is, once again, it's how you relate on, a, on an intimate kind of way. And Aquarius is ruled by, um, Aquarius is an interesting sign. There are a number of signs here at the top of the chart that are ruled by two planets. And Aquarius is one of them. So on one hand, Aquarius is ruled by Saturn. So we have Mars, which is your aggressive energy, being applied to Saturn, which is the planet of control. And as such, there are similarities to Capricorn. Capricorn is known as an aloof sign. Aquarius is known as an aloof sign. Seriously. <laughs> but there's more to it. Aquarius is a fixed sign. So Aquarius can be very stubborn at times. And all of the fixed signs have a wrap of being stubborn. And before I forget, I better spit this out. Aquarius because you'll hear very often in this video that Aquarian likes to date their friends. Aquarius, the 11th house is the sign of your friends. And as such, because Aquarius rules the 11th house, people think Aquarius is, you know, people like to think of Aquarius as the sign of lots of friends. And Mars and in Aquarius means you like to have sex with your lots of friends. <laughs> but it doesn't. It means you want to be friends first. And oh, I totally missed the point. <laughs> I was going to say something that I said, also, but the, I totally skipped the point. Mars in Aquarius uh, means a couple of things right, uh, right off the... So let's talk about just really quickly what Mars in Aquarius means. Mars in Aquarius, these guys are rebels. You know, These guys are humanitarian. These guys are stubborn. These guys are highly, highly, highly intellectual. They very much see the big picture in a way that no one else sees it. These guys will go out of their way and do stuff with their friends. Yes, they are uh, relationship guys. Do, they do want a very solid home life, and they are not relationship jumpers. They, they are not, um, as much as I like to make fun of them, Aqu you know, Aquarius dates their friends, you know, blah, blah, blah. But um, they're just a friend's first kind of sign. And um, the, but... They do believe in committed relationships. They're a fixed sign. They want to go out, have fun, do their thing, uh, and come home to a nice, safe, happy home. And that's the, what they want to do. <laughs> okay, and there's nothing wrong with that. And so they say sometimes Mars and Aquarius people make better friends 
than lovers. But they're more than that. They're idealistic people. You know, they believe in a certain way things should be, and they're willing to fight for that. For that, and that's just the action. They will stick up for you. Again, they're super rebellious. These guys are bad boys. These guys are the guys. These guys, uh, Sagittarius, Scorpios some Aries, these guys will run around, these guys are the ones who ride motorcycles and wear leather jackets and uh, some of them, you know, they smoke cigarettes. Uh, they're not necessarily heavy drug users, but these guys are bad boys, these guys are rebels, they do it their own way, they do not care what you think. But at the same time, they have this humanitarian approach to things. It's not like, you know, that's, so they believe in the big picture. Once again, they tend to have, they can have lots of friends and they are very, very good friends. They just sometimes have difficulty with one-on-one -on -one relationships. And that's the deal. So I'll say it again. I went, I went blah, 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 and I jumped the boat. So it's Mars energy. It's aggressive actual action energy uh, being mixed with Saturn. So Saturn's going to put a little bit of control on that Mars. It's going to focus it. And it's going to restrict some of it. So... Aquarius, they do not like being told what to do. <laughs> Saturn is going to lock that down. But they do like telling you what to do. So, you know, that's the deal. They do like lots of stuff as long as you agree with what they're doing. If you don't agree with them, they'll next you really fast. On top of all of that, so that's that action there. But there's more. Aquarius is also ruled by Uranus. And unlike some of the other signs, like uh, Pisces often... Jupiter and Neptune get interwound and it gets mixed up. In Scorpio, Pluto and Mars can be can get a little mixed up. But Saturn and Uranus, very few people mix that up. <laughs> Aquarius in the 11th house, they mix up all the time. But Mars and Saturn, Saturn's all about focus and discipline and control. Aquarius is a focused, disciplined and control sign. Yeah, they're freedom loving. Yeah, they do their thing. They want everybody to get naked and go run around down by the beach. Yeah, they think glitter is a, like a color, you know, or like glitter is a fabric, you know, that <laughs> they think these things. But at the same time, yeah, and Mars. So they want to have sex with your like friends, <laughs> lots of friends. But uh, Saturn is going to like Saturn somehow makes it OK. On the other hand, they're the Uranus energy is very explosive, very revolutionary. And so they're outside of the box thinkers and they can be somewhat eccentric and they're also they're eccentric, revolutionary, natural leaders and they're also inventors. And that's the deal. And depending on where this aspects, you'll see that these guys can make brilliant writers, master communicators and obviously amazing uh, revolutionary leaders. And that's my two cents on Mars and Aquarius. They're also bad boys to the bone. And uh, that's all I'm going to say. I'm not going to say anything too nasty about, this, <laughs> about them. <laughs> all right. Let's get down to see what some of the other guys say about this. All right. Okay. So, do 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 do. Who do we have here? Do 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 do. Okay. First up, Donna Van Toen. She writes about natal Mars and Aquarius. Mars is at its best when it has a physical outlet. Obviously, <laughs> okay. Mars is an Aquarius is an intellectual sign and loathes to expend any more physical energy than it has to. <laughs> it's like a tornado. Mars in the air signs like a tornado. Yeah. Okay. Consequently, Mars tends to be uncomfortable in Aquarius and may not be as productive here as it is in some of the other placements. If you're convinced of the importance of a cause or course of action, there's no problem, as this gives you the motivation to take physical action. Otherwise, the energy of Mars can get bottled up uh, where it creates inner conflicts and nervous tension. So they're saying Mars and Aquarius people can have a nervous tension among them. This, they can be, the rebels, man. This, the source of conflict is very often a conflict between your need for friends and your need to be an individual in the truest sense. So here she's talking about the Aquarius and how it rules the 11th house. You'll see a lot of these guys are talking, are going to talk about the 11th house. But as you see, just because Mars is in Aquarius uh, in your second house, 
it doesn't mean you're going to want to give all your money to your friends. Think about it. <laughs> These guys are going to go on and on and on about friends, but that's the 11th house. You know, Mars in Aquarius doesn't mean you're going to give all your money to your friends. Anyways, the source of conflict is very often a conflict between your needs for friends, blah, blah, blah. Often you can do well in areas like electronics, science, and writing where your originality will be appreciated rather than frowned upon. These guys are original. Seer straight up. Sexually, you're experimental and prefer, and prefer to play the field for a while before settling down. Men in particular find it easier to have women as friends than to have them as lovers. They don't always have an easy time keeping lovers happy. Though kind, Aquarius is a cool sign, right? They're really fun and they're pretty cool. They, you know, they're happy. They like to chill. Yay, what's up, playa? It's all cool, man. <laughs> okay. They... Though kind, they tend to be brotherly rather than loverly and can have a detached, almost, now they're talking about the Saturn part of it, detached, almost clinical attitude towards sex that can earn them an undeserved reputation for being cold-heartedness. Uh, I think this Aquarians can be rather uh, excited and passionate. It is Uranus energy after all. These men may need to realize that while sex may well just be another normal bodily function, most women prefer to have a little more mystique than, say, flossing one's teeth or showering. Women with this placement tend to be turned on by intuition, truthfulness, and helpfulness. You want fr so Okay, whatever. I don't, whatever, okay? Everybody can be turned on. Everyone can heat up. You just got to know the magic words. And uh, anybody in any sign can turn into a raging, uh, a raging uh, volcano of passion and lust. It says you want friends and may be more comfortable with a platonic relationship than a passionate one. You want an interesting mate or lover and a relationship that e evolves and renews itself continu continually. Being independent, you don't want a clingy vine or a terribly possessive partner. Basically, you're idealistic. You may therefore do a lot of market research and blah, 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 blah. So anyways, I think this is kind of putting forth a stereotype and it's kind of talking a little bit, although there might be some, you know, might uh, have some hints of truism in here. I kind of thinking that this is uh, feeding the feeding the typical stereotype, and um, you know, it's it's getting a bit on the uh, this and it's this bit of a stereotype, and she's kind of mixing some stuff. Uh, Aquarius can be a can they have the potential to be an ex exceedingly passionate sign. You can't have a res revolution and not give a shit. Hello? <laughs> you can't have a sexual revolution and not give a shit. This is the age of Aquarius. Take your clothes off and come party and dance with us. Uh, does That doesn't sound like a cold fish kind of... No offense, Pisces. That doesn't, uh, that doesn't sound like uh, cold fish people who aren't you know, sexually aggressive, if you ask me. Babs Kirby and Janie Stubb says, He will die with total strangers, but he will not live with me. Okay, so this is a line. He will die with total strangers, but he will not live with me. This line from Dora Purvin's song, The Altruist and the Needy Case, expresses perfectly what Mars and Aquarius is all about. Very cool and impersonal. These people will fight to the death for a cause they believe in, but find it very hard to deal with intimate, personal, and emotional issues. Uh, just because they might, um, you know, have difficulty dealing with it or they don't express it, doesn't mean that it's not there. Intense involvement feels very claustrophobic to the person with Mars and Aquarius. These people have a detached and intellectual attitude towards sexuality and have difficulty handling emotional situations. They often have strong principles concerning personal freedom, so that honesty and openness are valued much more highly than sexual fidelity. However, Aquarius is a fixed sign and does not change easily, so people with Mars here tend to have long-lasting relationships, even though they may have more than one on the go at the time. <laughs> Aquarius, remember, Aquarius dates their friends. They got a lot of friends. <laughs> okay. Like other fixed signs, Aquarius believe very strongly in loyalty and trust and will not easily forgive someone who betrays them. Their need for friendship is... The deed with the deal with Mars and Aquarius is they're doing something. This is a quest, a sign that quests. It, it, it's questing. It's doing something. And they want someone to join them on the quest. They don't want to be smothered. They want a second set of eyes. They want 
a friend to do some action with. And if you want to vibe with it, then they're cool with it. If you want to get in their way, they're not cool with that. It's very similar to Sagittarius in certain areas, except Sagittarius is a fire vibe and uh, Aquarius is an air vibe. You know, they need someone to bounce. Aquarius, Mars and Aquarius people need someone to bounce very worldly ideas off of. They need to be able to bounce their creativity off them so that they can receive back stuff that makes sense. <laughs> you know, they need that. Just like Aries needs someone to uh, push back against them. Aquarius needs someone to stimulate their intellectual ideas. And if you're not, and Mars in Aquarius is a that's a big, big deal. Mars heats up the Aquarius uh, um, outside of the box thinking vibe. And Aquarius is an exceptionally creative thinker. And if they need someone to, to, to joust with that thinking, you know, then that's just the vibe. Anyways, their need for friendship, again, this is an 11th house thing. If it was in the second house, they'd say the need for money. Their need for friendship is much stronger than their need for physical contact. So it's of much more significance to them than their partner, that their partner shares their interests and ideals than their bed. Fighting for a cause stimulates their sexuality, and they're likely to be attracted to those who fight alongside of them. Those with Mars here hate any form of possessiveness, and they will coldly rebuff public displays of affection, which they see as claiming ownership. In fact, they may not really enjoy being touched at all and generally feel more comfortable communicating. Uh, oh, communicating through the written or spoken word than with the body. Because they tend to be distanced from their feelings, they often have difficulty in understanding their own des desires. You know, This is a tendency to project coolness onto others while failing to recognize it in themselves. There's a lot of dis... That's a big one. Aquarius doesn't always see within themselves. But we... Every sign is guilty of that. There's a lot of discomfort and uncertainty where strong feelings are concerned, which can make the Mars and Aquarius person quite defensive and unpredictable. Because these people cannot trust their own instincts, they will find it hard to trust others, and they may prefer to end a relationship rather than risk getting hurt. There's a lot of stereotype in this person's writing here. Having strongly held ideals about sex and relationships, the Mars and Aquarius person always tries to act honorably and fairly. Oh, I think so. Uh, as long as you agree that with them. Okay. It's a matter of principle to these people to accord their partners equal rights and to listen to their point of view. And they always try to behave democratically and to be a thoughtful friend as long as you agree with them. If you disagree with Aquarius, they will rebel against you. It's that simple. <laughs> They're like the absolute best on the planet if you agree with them. Next, Sky Alexander. It's important, f it's important for you to be able to think and speak freely. F so true. Often you find yourself at odds with accepted truths. You enjoy being right. You find yourself at odds with accepted truths. You, s you have a, Aquarius has a way of seeing things different. They see different things. You enjoy being thought of as different a un and a unique individual. As a result, you may become involved in unpopular political causes or avant-garde avant art movements. How can you say that? Avant-garde art <laughs> movement. Or be on the cutting edge of scientific or technological causes. Aquarians are inventors. All right. Next. Do -do -do. Because Aquarius is a fixed sign, you can hold rather stubbornly to your opinions. When you believe in something, you believe passionately and express your ideas with evangelistical zeal. Though you consider yourself open-minded, you really regard your way of thinking as the only right way. You love discussing ideas, and your discussions frequently escalate to heat heated debates. You enjoy nothing better than a good intellectual argument with a worthy impo opponent. Others may find you extremely opinionated, but you see no virtue in being wishy-washy. Like, seriously. You're always ready to stand up or fight for what you believe in. Yeah, seriously. You have the energy and enthusiasm to stir others to action, and you could be affected as a labor organizer, politician, team captain, project head, or leader of a group dedicated to social change. However, you lack diplomacy and can alienate people with your abrasive and self-righteous approach. They tell us it tends to be arrogant and <laughs> self-righteous. Oh, it says self-righteous. From time to time, you may find yourself in trouble with authority figures, blah, blah, blah. One of your purposes in life is to break down old structures and change outworn traditions so that new ones can take their place. 
Rash and explosive Mars and Aquarius can indicate the rebel without a cause who rails against any authority or established order and wants to change for the sake of change alone. Maybe, maybe, I don't, I don't agree or disagree with that. They're rebellious, but they're not necessarily argumentative. Sexually, you're intrigued by anything new or unconventional. You consider yourself open-minded about sexual issues. For some, for some, for some Aquarians, some Aquarians might consider electricity birth control. Just saying, just saying, just saying, and may want to experiment with all sorts of sexual behaviors and partners. For you, variety certainly is the spice of life. Next, Francis Sokane and Louis Acrese. Mars in the sign of Aquarius gives the desire for independence to pursue unusual or unorthodox courses of action. So now we're going to talk. So all of the cold stuff is really talking about Mars heating up Saturn. So can you see how they're combining the trying to they're giving you your definitions? They're talking about Saturn being cold and aloof, and they're applying that to the eleventh house, which is your friends and social networks. So they're saying, and what they're doing is they're taking a step back and they're saying Mars is stimulating this Saturn in your eleventh house friends and stuff, and. You know, they're saying this all under the thing of Aquarius, the sign of Aquarius. So they're talking about one part of this greater dynamic. It's much more than getting out and being um, controlling and aloof and a cold sexual partner and not having any feelings and being passionate. That's all describing an intense, extreme version of Saturn applied to your social network. And that's... that's Mars, meaning intensity, applied to the planet of Saturn. Now these guys are going to apply it to Uranus, which is a rebellious kind of vibe happening here. This, this Mars position pr produces reformist tendencies that are translated into action. Uranus, reform, you know, reformist tendencies, action, Mars. Natives disguise Disguise. Native disguise. Go. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. <laughs> Natives devise original methods of doing things and are contemptuous of traditional views and methods unless these conform to logic and practical experience. The funny thing about Aquarius is they consider themselves practical, but they're most unpractical sign of them. <laughs> okay. Anyways, tradition is, rep is respected only if it deserves respect. In contrast to the Mars and Capricorn position, with which orders are obeyed merely because they are issued by authority. Do you guys see the difference in the Saturn aspect here? Saturn rules Capricorn as well. So, tradition is respected only if it deserves respect. In contrast to the Mars and Capricorn position, which is, they're talking really Mars and Saturn here, which or, with which orders are obeyed merely because they are issued by authority. Consequently, people with Mars and Aquarius do not work well under authoritarian direction. They must be allowed to learn by their own mistakes. However, they are in danger of discarding the old ways before being able to replace them with something better. Thus, the outcome of their actions can be either constructive or destructive. All right, next, Julia and Derek partner. There are a bunch of people. This goes on and on and on. Holy crap, this, these guys, so many people wrote about these guys. How much time we have? Okay, let's chug away. Do, 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 do. Julian Derek Parker. The independence and need for freedom, often present with Martian influence, is very evident when the planet is placed in Aquarius and nicely complements many Aquarian characteristics. So these guys are saying it's a good thing. Some of the guys said it was a bad thing. These guys are saying that it's a good thing. There's a decidedly unconventional streak indeed. We think that this planetary placing contributes more zaniness than any other. Although this can be extremely amusing and entertaining to friends and loved ones, it can also result in embarrassments at times. There's often stubbornness, because it's a fixed, air Aquarius is a fixed sign, and the energy of Mars is spent rather unevenly, so that there will be considerable bursts of activity, followed by times when the individual will want to get on with the usual demands of living. It's vital, you know, there's an ebb and a flow going on here. It's not a smooth ebb and a flow. It's very Uranus, sudden, unexpected. It's vitally important that the aspects Mars receives are studied with great care. If the planet is afflicted, do 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 do, 
uh, is afflicted by moon, the moon, Saturn, or Uranus, the likelihood of nervous strain and tension is considerable, and a releasing must be sought. An element of a pioneering spirit of Mars, rebel, rebels, right? Pioneers, rebels, is combined with the humanitarian side of Aquarius in this placing. As a result, the subject will do much to relieve suffering, uh, perhaps even a certain amount of field work in places that have suffered a famine or flood. In other words, Mars in Aquarius are significant of um, putting a large amount of energy into um, humanitarian efforts around the world. Like it's, they can really help a lot of people. Uh, so considerable originality is often indicated by this placing and can be expressed through scientific experimentation, experimentation inventiveness, or simply an interest in offbeat and unusual subjects. Exercise and sporting activities should contribute to a steady and regular expenditure of energy. Grant Louis says, your energies flow into social channels. Okay, so this is 11th house again. Your energies flow into social channels, which may be quite idealistic or quite personal. The more idealistic you can make them, the more you can prevent the social urges from becoming centered in yourself, and the greater you'll be successful in happiness. Um, blah, blah, and blah, blah. That's a little... Sidney Omar writes, In Aquarius, Mars gives us the natives who is idealistic, active with organizations here we go. okay now here we go Aquarius organizations he is sense actually I think so far the best one is Mars and Aquarius these guys are rebels these guys will have sex with you wherever and whatever they you know they date their friends um, they're inventive they're creative they can be brilliant orators you know great 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 leaders um, and they can uh, take up great causes it's mars like a lot of energy to help a lot of people not in a pisces nurturing way not in a virgo let's go you know do this. but in like if there's like a flood mars and aquarius is gonna like jump in there and say let's save all these people if there's a famine mars and aquarius is there it's these are the kind of things that these people do real human and humanitarian humanitarian <laughs> humanitarians <laughs> okay next Organizational ability is indicated. The, na the native has the fire to inspire others to make friends for various causes. His views generally are not orthodox, and it does lead to battles with authority. He tends to become set in his ways, uh, but he seldom loses touch with humanity. He would rather hurt himself than injure others. It's, it's you know, some people say it's a good placement. Some people say it's a negative placement. Lynn Burbeck says, you attract with an unusual, unclassifiable. Okay, now Mars is not usually what you attract. Venus is what you usually attract. Mars is what you go after. In other words, uh, if you're dating, Mars is the type of person that you're going to go after. Pisces is, the, uh, Venus is the type of person you attract. So if your Mars is in Pisces, Sorry, if your Mars is in, if your Venus is in Pisces, you're going to attract, you'll probably attract water signs. It depends on what else is in your chart. If your Mars is in Aquarius, so if your Venus is in Pisces, you'll attract water signs. If your Mars is in Aquarius, even if you're a Pisces, you're going to go after these people who have uh, humanitarian kind of ideals, which is not so weird because if you're in a missionary somewhere, then like those are the people you're going to meet other missionaries and that's who you're going to have sex with. That's just the way life works. Unless you hold out for when you come back and, you know, you go to a basketball game and date a cheerleader. It's up to you. Lynn Burbeck. Okay. Do, 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 do. You are attracted to friendly sexual uh, uh, intellects. They do not necessarily lead to anything more serious. To any others who appeal to your taste for unusual... Un okay, yeah. So you're attracted to, you move towards uh, friendly sexual intellectuals that don't necessarily lead to anything too serious. There's not a heavy duty kind of vibe or to any people who appeal to your taste for the unusual, unconventional, complex, or even off the wall, a touch zany, definitely smart, or to any group or team activities rather than one-on-one uh, -on -one kind of vibe. You're not necessarily a tete-a-tete -tete -tete kind of cat. You're more like, hey, let's go hang out with the crew. You're repelled by having your sexuality presumed upon simply because it is open or unusual. 
by meat and potato types. Not that you want to have sex with meat and potatoes unless like that's your thing. Or those who bore you or fail to appreciate your uniqueness and the intricacies of your personality and mild perversions. <laughs> or being forced to interact more intimately than is comfortable for you. And you don't like crybabies. When you're alone, it's because you're... But you do like people who care. When you're alone, it's because your desires and your way of expressing them are possibly too rarefied uh, for someone else uh, to be present at the other time. Maybe you don't realize how unusual your tastes are and have been trying to find someone who is straight and ordinary, giving rise to disappointments. Or you have failed to realize that other people... you know, really fail to relate to other people properly for some, you know, this, you know, for the same reason. So you probably don't realize how outside the box you really are. I don't think Aquarius is that outside the box, actually. But uh, you never know. You know, we don't always know ourselves. The more you accept the erratic and out of the ordinary nature of what turns you on, the more paradoxically you'll have turn you on. Deny it and you will be denied. Okay, whatever. John Tiley, you may be tempted to play the field to find maximum opportunities to extend your range of expressions. Maybe. Mm -hmm. Ideally, you should find a partner who wants to be as wide-ranging as you are, combining variety with truly satisfying intimacy. You go out of your way to discover and fulfill all your lover's fantasies, which makes you a desi desir particularly desirable partner. You know, you guys are into all of the pages of the Karma Sutra. You guys are like, hey, you know what? I bought the whole book. Let's, like, do the whole book. You know, like, I didn't only buy, like, like this is not, like, you know, whatever. Robert Hand says, you may have difficulties with authorities. All right, get it. Unless they take, unless... They take the trouble to explain why you should do what they ask. Right? You don't follow orders very well, but you do believe in logic. Hey, I don't think you should like whip it out and start wiggling it at the stop sign. Why not? <laughs> so, because like, you might scare the pigeons. Seriously? You really might scare the pigeons? That's a good idea. I think I'll put it back in. See? See? Tape, you know, see, see, it's not that, it's not that weird. As you get older, you'll be concerned with the greater good of society. You're quite capable of directing your efforts to goals that will not benefit you personally, but will benefit others. Even while you are young, you may resent authority, blah, 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 blah. If you're convinced of the importance of a cause, you work better with a group than you do alone. You know how to align your own objectives with other people's so that your results are satisfying them with all. Mars in Aquarius energy. You know how some people like to work in silence? You know, like a Scorpio is going to work in silence. They're like, shh. Or, you know, or a Cancer is going to want someone in the next room. Or like a Leo needs to work in front of everyone. You know, everyone's all the... Aquarians, excuse me, they need to hear the group while they're working. They need to know that they're connected to something larger than themselves. You know, everybody's a little bit different. Here we go. Good Gology Astrology wrote, and I really like the way these guys present their Mars stuff. I added a lot of their stuff in this series here, in the Mars series. Okay. Good Golly Astrology calls Mars and Aquarius the sexual libido raider? The sexual go go outside and beat it a raider? No. How's it? Liberator. Oh, son. <laughs> Can you read that to me? Can you read that to me, Hump? 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 No, not what does it mean. What does it say? Hump? No, Hump. Hump. This is Humpy. This is our Hump Day horoscope mascot. <laughs> Thanks, Humpy. Thanks for that little cameo, that little walk on. Mars and Aquarius, the sexual liberator. Mars and Aquarius lovers are the least physical of all the Mars types. Of course. It's an air sign. What do you want? Aquarius is an air sign. Of course, these lovers have all of the same sexual juices, physical needs, and desires as all of us. But with Mars and Aquarius, these needs are processed in such an intellectual and objective fashion that sex seldom has the same pressing corporal realities that make it so problematic for the rest of us. For these lovers, everything important about sex happens inside their heads. In one sense, this gives them extraordinary freedom. 
They can use sex the way a mathematician uses calculus or an artist uses perspective to achieve a specific goal. It's not as cold as it sounds, all right? So it sounds, it's not. It's liberating, the sexual liberator. These goals can vary a great deal. Some may choose to use it as a source of inspiration and spiritual revitalization. Others as a means of persuasion. St you know, okay, so still others will use sex for its shock value. I told you electricity is a form of birth control for some of these guys. I don't think, maybe that's not what they mean by shock value. And um, next, this abstracted, this abstracted approach to sex means that Mars and Aquarius lovers naturally feel free to experiment with their sexuality. The emotional conditions and social restrictions most people place on the sex act mean little, mean, it means little to these thoroughly rational and unconventional lovers. The only restrictions they recognize are those of time and space, and their best, uh, at their best, the absolute freedom with which these lovers approach both sex and love is inspirational. I think that's cool. Time spent with them can be a true liberation for us less adventurous souls. There's nothing wrong with that. It's not a, you know, it's not a competition here. This one, this one, this is one of the most idealistic placements of Mars, meaning that for these lovers, love is understood in terms of ideas, usually big ideas. It's not so much that these people think that they can change the world by making love. Tell that, <laughs> tell that to the 60s, right? No, it's more that the sex act must fit into an overall idealism, into a system of ideas, hopes, and dreams that often has little to do with its simple biological function. So they're saying Aquarius is dealing with a greater system here. It's not just a large group of people or friends, as the 11th house would tell us. We're talking about a larger group of systematic ideas you know it's an air sign it's a fixed air sign that, um, that brings humanity together and Mars is pumping a little bit of a sex vibe in here and it's giving it the the little Mars juice to the whole thing to heat up the action because of their extreme idealism with regards to sex Mars and Aquarius lovers often have an easier time loving causes or humanity as a whole than they do loving one individual. Kindness, self-sacrifice, and service come easily to these people, but intimacy is always a problem. It's not unusual for those who love Mars and Aquarius individuals to feel distance and out of touch. No matter how much a Mars and Aquarius lover may profess to love someone, there's always a sense that he or she could along, can get along just as well alone. I didn't say that that's true. <laughs> Aquarius likes to feel connected to the group. It's just saying, give off the vibe. The, the bottom line here is that Mars in Aquarius lover is always inferior to the Mars in Aquarius friend. These people always choose the ease and camaraderie of friendship over the intensity and passion of love. There's This in no way limits their sexual lives. As far as these folks are concerned, Friendship is a wonderful basis for a sexual relationship. And I don't know how many times you'll hear an Aquarius say, get to know them first. Whoa, that guy, why that guy so aggressive? Oh, it's coming. Hey, let's just be, get to know him, be friends first. That's the Aquarius way. That's the Aquarius way. <laughs> you know, they want to know what they're getting into. It's not that big of a deal. There is a warmth and camaraderie, but none of that nasty emotional stuff like jealousy or pettiness that often makes love and sex so irrational and dangerous. The Mars and Aquarius friend is capable of compassion, gentleness, and loyalty. They seek to teach, reform, and help the people they care about, and they stand by those folks through every kind of trial. In fact, Mars and Aquarius friend is so terrific that after a while, any partner of a Mars and Aquarius individual may start wondering why they ever wanted a lover. He's such good friends. I don't even know why. We're gonna, I, you know, I didn't. I wasn't wearing pants to that party, anyways. I don't see what the problem is. I got nothing to take off. I got nothing to hide. We all friends here. Okay. Celebrity examples of Mars and Aquarius. Uh, uh, examples of the sexual liberator are many people who were, to say the least, unconventional in their sex life. There's check this out. There's a woman named Isadora Duncan 
who ensued marriage until she got a chance to wed uh, a Russian poet almost half of her age, writer Joanna Barnes, who... What? Okay, next. I didn't read that properly. Next, writer Joanna Barnes, who loved men and women with equal intensity. Filmmaker Ed Wood Jr., who was an unabashed cross-dresser and... Compo okay, then... Com Composer Richard Wagner, Wagner, who openly lived as a man and wife with a wo with a woman who was legally married to one of his fans. Anybody? Any of these examples making sense to anybody? Some of our some of our examples seem to have an overly intellectualized view of sex. The Victorian artist and designer William Morris devoted more time to educating his young wife's mind than satisfying her sexually, and as a result, he lost her. For others, like Tennessee Williams, sex was a matter of quick anonymous pickups that provided only for a momentary distraction. Um, for these people, the idea of sex all, the idea of sex weighs, outweighs its physical manifestation. Next, here's a neat one. An outstanding example of this is Hugh Hefner, who not only devised the powerful conception of sexuality, right? He idealized not not idealize it he like he did a he brought beauty and love in a humanitarian way to sexuality like you know and he sold it <laughs> he sold it to millions and millions of people across the form employing boy magazine and certainly some of the countless young women who have passed through Hef's life through the years have struck a chord in his heart all right, after all, you know, his Venus is in Pisces, so he's artsy farts and he likes to take care of people. But, all right, next. Okay, oh, but none of the women could match the allure to the ideal of well scrubbed beauty and sexual availability that filled his magazines. Here, there's another one. Another example of this quality is Nancy Cunard, who proved to be much more in love with the ideal of the liberation of. Uh, of Americans than she was uh, with the musician that she shared her bed. And <laughs> one more, Erkstein Caldwell, who felt, oh no, no. Okay. Anyways, you guys get the point. <laughs> these guys are these guys are sexual liberators. So these guys they're Aquarius, you know, they're an air sign. They like to think about it. Libra likes to watch, Gemini likes to talk about it, Aquarius likes to think about it. They also at the top of the chart, they like to bring you know, sexuality to the on a grand scale. And that's the deal with um and that's the deal with Mars and Aquarius. What are your basic things to remember? First, these guys are rebels. They're bad boys. Mars and Aquarius, these guys start revolutions, period. <laughs> Secondly, these guys are some of the best friends of the entire Zodiac. Third, these guys don't say it. A lot of these guys don't say it. But these guys can be major sex freaks. Fourth, these guys are major family guys. Major. But they have to find the right like the friend. They're the best friends of the zodiac. They're great to have on your team, and it's not that the, you what you want your lover to be your best friend. And but Mars and Aquarius, that's the deal. The only problem is they have a lot of interests. They like to get out and see the world. They like to, this humanitarian aspect of thing, and then they like to come home and do their action at home. And that's just the way it is. They don't want all the strings. You know, Uranus is the least string of the string planets. Saturn controls the shiz. Saturn controls the shiz. They keep everything tight. Anyone who has a strong Saturn placement in their chart is going to have their, their shiz tight. But Uranus, so, Cap, so Aquarius, their stuff is tight. No strings. Game is tight. No strings. Mars, Let's get stuff going. Aquarius, hey, how you doing? <laughs> and, that's, and that's the action. And that's the gist, guys. Mars and Aquarius. Once again, uh, and that's the gist. You know, 
I suggest Mars and Aquarius is a great sign. Just a reminder that this right here, let's go back to it for a sec. This is our sponsor here. This is our store, theastroside.com. And this is how you help support the channel. I really like this shirt right here too. And that's this on the background here. And it comes in white. I like all the colors. The pink is cute. <laughs> the pink is cute. And then the dark blue is really cool, actually. It's really pretty. These are all t-shirts. We have soft sunny side 2.0 for the kids as well. Anyways, if you'd like to support the channel, please give the video a bloop, thumbs up, share it with your friends. Don't knock Mars and Aquarius. You know, everybody can be uh, you know, everybody can be faithful. I didn't say anything in here about cheating, right? You notice that? And so Anyone can cheat. Anyone can be unfaithful. Anyone can be faithful. If you have, you know, if you want to, if you know someone who's a Mars and Aquarius and you want to get with that person, just be a good friend. You know, don't be too controlling. Don't be freaky bananas. You know, try and see where they're coming from. They're an extremely outside of the box thinker. They are very creative and they need someone to, to bounce their ideas off of, to share their their journey with, the conquest with, you know, they want to, you know, hang out and change the world with somebody. Excuse me, even if changing the world just means robbing that bank down the street. Just saying, I'm not judging. <laughs> Anyways, from the sunny side.net, I'm sunny. <laughs> Wishing everyone, oh, just reminding when if you want a personal reading, check it out in the description box below. If you want to hang out uh, on one of the live streams, then just tune in every morning or every night here on the channel. And that's the action. From the sunny side, Dot and Adam Sunny, wishing everyone the absolute best of a super, super, super beautiful day. Be cool, everyone, and I'll see you guys soon.